I am nothing more than a liar and a cheat. Hello, my name's Stephen. Welcome to FMR. This is the Lakeland 100 Training Series, Episode 5. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about poles. We're going to be talking about bladders. We're going to be talking about bottles and soft flasks. And we're also going to be having a look at last week's training. So let's start with last week's training. Monday, easy 10K on the treadmill. Tuesday morning, 500 meter climb on the treadmill. Tuesday evening, went out with my club and we did 10K on the roads. Then on Wednesday, uh, I had a race. So I was running outdoors at the Little Hampton Beach Run. You can see a video of that up here. Thursday, I did a 500 meter climb on the treadmill in the morning. And then in the afternoon, I filmed episode four of the Lakeland 100 series. So uh, 21 kilometers outdoors on the hills. On Friday, I did a 10K progressive run on the seafront. And then we went to Wales. <laughs> and on Saturday, I climbed Snowdon with my family. And on Sunday, I climbed Snowdon again on my own. Total mileage for the week. Right, you know I said I was gonna do 100K every week. Basically, I am nothing more than a liar and a cheat. I am basically low life scum who's cheated his way to 97 kilometers, not even 100K, because Saturday's um, activity was just a hike and I've included it in my run miles, basically because of the elevation. So I think the elevation counts. But then on Sunday, I did run up Snowden as hard as I could. I got up and down in two hours. And you can see footage of that now, me just getting to the summit of Snowden. So that was my weekly training, a good amount of elevation, uh, both on the treadmill and outdoors, and uh, a decent amount of mileage. And you'll notice I didn't do very much on the treadmill last week. Uh, not for any particular reason, just that I happened to be running outside more. I did about 20K on the treadmill, all in, uh, and then the rest of it was all outdoors. And looking at my heart rate, you'll see that 10% of my running was in zones four and five, and 80% of my running was in zones one and two, leaving 10% in and around zone three. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. That's where we need to be in terms of aerobic and anaerobic training. Before we go any further, if you are enjoying the content, if you're finding it useful, please do whack the like button and uh, click subscribe and the notifications bell. Uh, still trying to get to 10,000 subscribers, so if you could help me out, I'd really appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. And also just to let you know, we have now activated channel memberships. So there are various levels that you can join. If you feel like you want to support the channel a bit more, then you can join as a member. Uh, from as little as $2, two pounds a month, uh, up to around about nine pounds, $10 a month. Uh, you can support the channel and for that you'll get extra perks like uh, extra videos that only members see um, and photos and behind the scenes footage, things like that, uh, that uh, normal subscribers wouldn't get to see. So if you do feel like you want to subscribe and support the channel, I would really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, let's talk about poles. There are two different manufacturers who most people buy. Lecky, which is the ones I use, and Black Diamond, which are also very popular poles. The whole point of poles is to save some energy in your legs so that some of your arms are taking the weight of your body rather than your legs taking the whole weight of your body. Don't wait until the end of the race to use your poles when you're really tired. Use them when you're not tired towards the beginning of the race up the hills because that will save your legs for later in the race. There are two types of running pole that you might buy. Uh, they are the telescopic poles and the folding poles. Most people will buy folding poles. So these are the ones that you pull apart. They've got a, a wire or a piece of um, nylon cord in the middle of them. You fold them up and you can store them either in a salmon quiver uh, or in a race belt or on your backpack. 
Now you must practice with poles before your race. So don't just turn up at a race, get them out. You'll start stabbing people behind you because you're not sure how to hold them properly. You'll get them caught between your legs. You'll trip over them. You could get injured. Practice, practice, practice. There are also some great Nordic walking technique videos if you want to watch them on YouTube. Uh, but the main thing is experience, getting to know how to use them. And the main thing to get to, get to know how to use them is how to store them, how to fold them up, how to put them away and how to get them out again quickly and efficiently so that you're not faffing about when you're in your race trying to pack your poles away and getting annoyed with them. And I think that's it for poles. Just look out for carbon poles that are made by Lecky or Black Diamond. Right, so let's talk about race vests or hydration vests. Uh, some people still call them backpacks or camelbacks. So on a race like the Lakeland 100 or any long distance race, any ultra race, you may be required to carry certain stuff and you may want or need to carry certain things. And what we use are things called race vests. It's a, it's a weird name because it's not a vest. It is a, it is a backpack that you put on. Uh, the main makes, I use Salomon. Uh, there's also Ultimate Direction and Nathan. Lots of companies make these race vests. Uh, but those are, those are three of the big ones, I would say. If you want to go budget, there are great race vests made by Anoniji. Anoniji? Ano... Let me just check that. So it's Aoniji. A-O-N-I-J-I. Great hydration vests, budget or affordable price. Depending on the distance of the race that you're doing, uh, depending on how much stuff you need to carry, there are different sizes of these vests. So some of them will carry just three litres worth of stuff. Others will carry 20, 40 litres worth of equipment. So it's important that you get the right one for the race that you're doing. And sometimes people will have lots of different ones and they choose between them depending on the distance of the race and what they've got to carry. Now, of course, in order to stay well hydrated on any ultra run, uh, you need water and to tell you all about bottles and soft flasks and hydration packs uh, here's Stephen thank you Stephen uh, so when you carry water you're going to carry it in either a backpack like a big bladder in your backpack or you're going to carry it in bottles in the front of your race vest so I'm going to give you two good reasons why you shouldn't use a bladder in your backpack. Firstly, you won't know how empty or full it is. When you're running, it's very difficult to assess in your backpack how full or how empty your bladder is. Secondly, in a race, it's an absolute nightmare to fill up. You've got to take your backpack off, you've got to get the bladder out, you've got to take the plastic thing off the top, open it up and fill it up with water and then put it all away again. It takes too long, it's too much of a fat. So I've always used soft flasks. Now they are flasks that, as I say, it's a pliable material. You fill them with water. When you've drunk the water, um, it collapses down. Uh, so it's a small package. It's not very heavy. It's not very cumbersome. Um, and it's easy to see how much you've got left. Um, it's easy to drink out of them. The problem with uh, soft flasks is they are not very durable. Uh, so if you pack them away in all your gear, uh, they can easily get uh, just a little nick and that's them done for, they'll leak. Uh, so that's a problem with soft flasks. But I still, I still generally use soft flasks. The other option is your standard hard plastic bottle. Uh, plenty of people use them. Uh, the thing I don't like about bottles is the sloshing around of the water. Uh, when you use a soft flask, as you drink, the flask collapses and there's not much air in the bottle itself. Whereas with a hard plastic bottle, you drink the water, the air inside the bottle is still there and the water is sloshing about all over the place while you're running, it's making a noise. Uh, the other thing is they're heavy and cumbersome in your race vest. Uh, they're not very comfortable sometimes because they're hard, so they press against your ribs um, and they can cause bruising. Um, 
but plenty of people use them plenty of people are quite happy with hard bottles in their hydration vest i use soft flasks so there's your choices don't don't use a bladder if you can avoid it i mean if you like them fine but i would advise not to use a bladder soft flasks or hard bottles the other good thing about having two bottles as opposed to one bladder is that you can have different drinks in each bottle so sometimes you might have coke in one bottle and water in another bottle or you might have tailwind and water or milk and tea I mean, <laughs> you can have whatever you like but at least you've got the option of having two different drinks in two different bottles So there we are, we've covered running poles, we've covered race hydration vests and we've covered different kinds of bottles that you might use to hydrate yourself with. So if you're new here, do please consider subscribing. Just click the uh, button down below, thank you very much, much appreciated. And if you're new to trail running, then you might want to watch this video just here. And uh, if you haven't seen the rest of the Lakeland 100 training series, then uh, this one down here will do you and we'll see you for episode 6 of the Lakeland 100 training series next week. Take care everybody, bye bye.